Hi everybody, good evening, and we welcome you to The Most Excellent Way, um, and we're located in Salem, Oregon. And right now, across the way, we have people at 375 Madrona Avenue South at Salem Heights Church. They're in person, men at one end of the building and women at the other end of the building with childcare available. But also, every week, we've been doing this, where we're a live feed, and um, I'm Matt McCollin, pastor at Salem Heights Church, a pastor of the Addictions Victory here at Salem Heights, as God rescued me out of addiction in 1987 at 22 years old. But then I also have with us here uh, Caleb Domeyer, who uh, you guys are going to hear a little more from him in a little bit. But we're just thankful that we get to do this with you. And so well, I'm going to ask Caleb to pray for us as we get started. And we'll uh, get into God's Word tonight. Watch what he does. So will you pray for us? Yeah, you bet. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. And thank you for uh, everyone um, that could be here with us tonight and those watching live, uh, we just ask for your guidance and protection over us as we dive into your word and try and get a deeper understanding of who you are and what you want us to be about. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we've been doing the most excellent way now at Salem Heights Church for about, well, over 10 years. And uh, this has been a great addition, being able to add in a live feed every Monday night. And so I'm just thankful to jump over here. I love all the different folks that have been jumping on as we ask them to. I hope you guys are encouraged by that too. And so tonight, as we launch, one of the things we start with over a, a, across the way, if the men are there, we always talk, start with why this is a safe group. So have a... Uh, Caleb, share a couple of the reasons why this is a safe group, and then I'll share another couple, and, and there you go. So, hey, you want to share a couple of the reasons why this is a safe group? I'd love to, yeah. Uh, my favorite reason why this is a safe group is because we're always going to get into God's Word. We're not going to rely on man's opinion, but we're going to see what God has to say about these things. And another reason is we have a whole bunch of people praying for us. Yeah, we're always going to get into God's Word. Uh, if you'll be in this book every day, it'll change your life. We're going to make that promise. And we've been making that promise for over 10 years. And even this young man sitting with me is a product of the reality of that promise as God's rescued, you know, rescued us both. And then as we're always getting to God's word, you know, you do have a lot of people praying for you right now. Is that what the one you said, right? Yeah. You got, yeah. by the way, um, I'm going to say over a thousand people are praying for you all here on the live feed, people in person across the way at Salem Heights Church. Just know um, there's a lot of people praying for you um, because they know we're doing this and they're praying. If you've shown up, you're a product of prayer. Yeah. The other two reasons this is a safe group is we all get it. Um, all of us that are serving it the most excellent way, uh, we come from it. Um, God rescued me out of addiction in 1987. I grew up in addiction, grew up in an alcohol, uh, well, alcoholics. Both of my parents were alcoholics. Um, and in the midst of that, I fell into that myself and many other addictions in high school and all in, into my 20s. And then at 22, got, got a hold of my heart. So we all get it. And then Caleb comes from it. Um, we're going to talk more about that here in a few minutes. But he's a miracle. Um, by the way, God is still doing miracles because miracles by best definition means there is no way that that could ever happen. And there was people saying that about Caleb and, um, and it's happened. And so here we are, we get to do this with you. And, and so we all get it. And then what gets said here stays here. Now we would love for you to type in messages to us. We, we would love to see uh, what you guys have for us uh, as far as who's here with us. And so just know that we're watching the, the screen on the side here. And so uh, Gary, good to see you. Glad you're with us. And so as we see those come through, we'll, we, we want to be able to interact with you guys uh, and ladies a little bit. So, um, but if you type something in there, it's going to be pretty much permanent because it's going on our website. So there you go. So you're going to want to be careful about that. If you don't want to say something, don't type it in. But we'd love to hear from you. So those are the reasons to safe group. And then, hi, Cassandra. Glad you're with us. Um, and then in that, we always then, after the 10 Attitudes of Victorious Living, we, or I'm sorry, after we do the introduction and why it's a safe group, we jump into the 10 Attitudes of Victorious Living. And so you want to read the first five, maybe sure. the verse at the top and then the first five, yeah. and we'll work through these Attitudes of Victorious Living. And I'll tell you a little bit more about where these all came from here in a minute, but will you read those for us? Yeah. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 2, 5. One, humility. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 3. I admit I am powerless over the effects of drugs, alcohol, and self-centered behavior. My life is unmanageable. Two, repentance. Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. I believe Jesus Christ can and will create in me a new way of life. Three, submissive. Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. I give my will and my life to Jesus Christ. 4. Honesty. 
Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 5, 6. I honestly examined myself in the light of God's word. 5. Merciful. Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. I humbly ask God's forgiveness for my sinful past. I am able to forgive those who have hurt me. And then jumping over to number 6. Obedient. Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Matthew 5, 8. I desire to live under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit day by day. We're actually going to be looking at obedience tonight. Number seven is reconciliation. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Matthew 5, 9. I ask forgiveness from all those I have hurt or dealt with unfairly. Number eight, faith. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 10. I trust in the power of Jesus Christ when I face hardships and trials. Number nine, perseverance. Jesus said, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. For rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Matthew 5, 11 through 12. I stand firm in my faith that Jesus is in control of all things. And then we wrap up with number 10, loving servant. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see it and glorify your Father in heaven. As a new creation, I share with others the good news of a risen Savior who makes people whole. Now, we've been doing 10 years of Mondays um, reading those 10 attitudes of victorious living. And so I wanted to share this with you all that, you know, Glenn and Judy Wright started this ministry, The Most Excellent Way, all the way back in 1986. There's most excellent ways all over the nation and around the world. And so when we're doing this, these attitudes, this couple that came out of addiction down in San Diego, California, they were going to a little church and then they wanted to start a group to see people rescued the same way that they were rescued out of addiction. Uh, Christ set them free and they were free indeed. And so they, in the midst of that, they came up with these 10 attitudes of victorious living out of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter five and Matthew chapter six, um, the Sermon on the Mount. And so it's just been awesome to watch what God's doing um, in people, changing them, molding and shaping them. And so Glenn and Judy Wright are both with the Lord now, and we were able to do this ministry now um, here at Salem Heights Church and then also nationally and internationally. And so we're thankful that you're all with us. Or if you're watching this later, we're really thankful you're catching this. So now in the Sermon on the Mount, there's a promise that gets made in Matthew 6.33. You want to read that for the folks? Um, here's the promise. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you in Matthew 6.33. So... That is a promise. If you'll seek him first, all things will be added. And that's why we do this group. We watch people's lives be transformed with that, with that reality. I think I saw that Jerry jumped on with us. So thankful that you're with us, Jerry. Um, and, and so uh, Gary, Cassandra, and others that are there, just know that you can interact with us on the live feed. They've got that messaging. We'll be reading that and saying hi to y'all. Um, but we are thankful that you're here with us. And so um, Jerry, thankful that you jumped on as well. So in that Folks, um, there's a passage that we've read now all these years, Titus 3 through 8, and this is where you'll see that Matthew 6, 33 play out. If you'll seek his kingdom first, all things will be added. And here's a perfect example. Will you read for them Titus chapter 3, 3 through 8, Caleb? Yeah. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, he saved us, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration, new birth and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Titus 3, 3 through 8. Now, over at, uh, in the lot, when we're together doing this with the men or with the women on the other end, we then ask, well, what did you get out of that passage? And so I'm going to ask Caleb, you just read it again. You've read that now, you know, a hundred times and times. gone through it a ton of times as you've been coming to group for a lot of years. But what's something that impacts you from that passage that you just read to these folks? Yeah, I was just talking about what we were, what, what I was, was foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, 
living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. And it says, but when the kindness of God um, and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, he saved us. So he saved us. It's nothing I did. It's nothing um, I could do for myself. It took Christ to reach into my life and, and save me from the path I was on. Man, I, I love that. And again, you're going to hear his testimony. Caleb, Caleb, as he gives his testimony to you in a little bit here, um, and as we keep working through this lesson on obedience here, soon, um, that foolish, disobedient, deceived, uh, we watched that play out in, in Caleb's life. Now, again, I was too. I come out of that. God rescued me. I never forget where I come from, and I'm thankful to do this with all you. Um, at 56 years old, there's a lot of life that has happened between when God saved me at 22 out of addiction to be with you all now. But I got to watch this young man go through some pretty dark times and then the privilege of being alongside him. Then, uh, you know, watching God change your life has been a blessing and we're watching it happen with you all too. And so Vince, we're glad you're with us tonight, brother. Thank you. I'm thankful that you're there. Um, as you heard that, I hope you're encouraged. Now, one of the things we do with the folks across the way is if you can memorize Titus 3, 3 through 8, you show up here and you find me or Caleb or one of the staff and you can, and ladies at the other end too, the ladies are doing it there. You show up and you can uh, share that Titus 3, 3 through 8. You know, it doesn't have to be word perfect, just close. Uh, we'll get you a $25 gift certificate to get yourself a steak at the Little Roadhouse Grill or, or a salad or whatever we want to get there. But what we know is this, if, if you're working at memorizing just one line at a time, um, that passage that's going to be with you the rest of your life. And so we've had many of our folks, men and women alike, that have worked at it one line at a time, you know, and then they, they see the beauty of it was what it was, now it is what it is, and now we have a great hope for the future. We're heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Princes and princesses of heaven that are showing up on the live feed here, and we're thankful for that. Robert, we're glad you're with us too. And so you come to know Christ, you're, you're an heir according to the hope of eternal life. And I love that passage for that reason. So we're watching it happen, change. Now in that, after we go through Titus 3 through 8, we then do um, introductions. And so uh, y'all, as you, we'd love to see you put on there that you're here with us, say hi to us, let us know you're there. When we get done with this live feed, I go back, uh, my wife and I go back over these every week, even, whoever is with you, I go back and pray for you all. Um, look at the names, pray for you, um, find out if there's something that you've asked for prayer for. We go into the private messaging to make sure we're addressing prayer requests that show up there. Just know that we take this super serious still on this too. So if you if you have prayer requests, get them to us. You can do it through the private messaging or you can put it on here. So we're thankful we get to do this with you. But obviously um, you've met us and we would love to hear from you. So, so in that, we then talk about victory after we do introductions, right? So you're here with us. And what we would do is we'd give you a welcome token that, that says on there, because you're, you know, you're here with us, you get one of these tokens of our appreciation that God brought you. Mm -hmm. And on the back side of this token, this welcome token, it says, we love because he first loved us. And we do. So we get to do this with you all because he rescued us out of the crud that we are trapped in. Mm -hmm. And we're thankful to be able to share God's word um, with you all. Jenna, really thankful you're with us too. Good to see you. Um, then we talk about, and we'd love to hear about the time that God is the victory you've had, your time. So we talk about this. Moments turn into minutes. You showed up. We got a welcome token for you. Moments turn into minutes. Minutes turn into hours. Hours turn into days. Days turn into weeks. Weeks turn into months. Months turn into years. And you have a different legacy taking this a moment at a time. And we've been doing this now, like I said, for over 10, 10 years. And we're watching legacies happen. They keep showing up. Showing up changes everything. And so, uh, Laura, glad you're with us too. Um, so then we start giving out tokens, um, 30 days of victory. Is anybody at 30 days of victory tonight? We would ask you that. We'd love to hear from you if you want to type it in. Then we get into, you know, we have a token for 60 days of victory. And so if you come in person, we'll get these to you also. We'll get you these tokens. 60 days of victory. By the way, at the most excellent way, we use the term victory. Recovery is a great word. But what we've watched happen because people have placed their faith in Christ, John chapter eight says, when Christ sets you free, you are free, free indeed. And, and you're, according to second Corinthians chapter five, you're a new creation. Romans chapter six at the very beginning says you're a new person. And so what we're watching happen is they come to Christ, folks come to Christ, he changes their hearts and their minds and they're living out this victory now because first John chapter four and five call you and I, as we placed our faith in Christ, overcomers victorious ones. The term Nike is used there in the Greek, like that company up, up north, Nike, victorious ones. 
And so we're in victory. And so we do this together. So then we would get to 90 days of victory. We'd have a token for that. And we thank, we thank the Lord for 90 days of victory. And we're thanking the Lord for almost 15 months of victory. Thank you, Jerry, uh, for letting us know that. That's awesome. And then also then we get to, are you at six months of victory? We have a token for six months of victory. And then we have a token for nine months, nine months of victory. And we'd get this to you. And again, if you, if you stop in, we'll get this to you. And you're right, Jen, every day is a victory. Thank you, God, for that, right? One day at a time, one moment at a time and each day at a time. And then we get to a year uh, of victory. My good friend um, who leads the most excellent way in Panama City, Florida, who's going to be coming out May 20th and 21st here uh, to help us with a conference, Rick McClung, when he was looking at wanting to start a group uh, of victory, because he came out of drug addiction, was on the streets of Maryland, God rescued him. And so he was then in Florida and he wanted to start a group like this. And he, uh, he went to a most excellent way to check it out because he had never been to one. And after they got to this part where they gave out a year token, there was a young man there that they got up for a break, a coffee break to come back. And the young man said, I can't wait to show my dad his one year token. And, and Rick went, there it is, you know, because God had rescued Rick out of, you know, decades of addiction. And now he's a pastor at Panama City, Florida. And he and I, um, we pray for each other. We pray for you. I know they're praying for us in Panama City for you guys right now, too. So Cassandra, yeah, thank you. Um, it is true. And and every day, it's just one moment at a time in the midst of those days. And they, you string those days together, and we have a whole new legacy. I'm thankful for you all. It's great to see you that, that you've joined us. So we talk about victory. We give out the tokens. And then we do this. I ask, what are you thankful for? And uh, I'm going to ask Caleb real quick here. Um, and you don't have to do 30 seconds or less, you know, what, what are you thankful for, uh, to share with these folks? Yeah, sure. I'm just thankful for God's provision and that his plan is so much better than mine. Um, he takes care of all the details, so I don't have to, all I need to do is trust in him. And, uh, he's done so much for, for me and my family, um, over the course of my life, but especially in the last 10, 12, 15 years, it's just crazy to see, um, what he's done for us. I'm just thankful for God's provision. And, and as you, you'll hear his testimony in a few minutes, um, as he shares that, man, I tell you, I, I don't know all of your testimonies. Many of you know where you come from. God knows where you come from. And, and he wants to use those as you share the word of God with folks and the gospel. Um, it's, it's powerful stuff. And so we're going to get to that because ultimately when he says, Hey, for the last 10 to 12 years, look what God's done. I know the darkness that, that Caleb was trapped in, you know? And so, Thankful. Yeah, me too. And I'm just super thankful to be able to do this with you. There's a lot of, you know, the last couple of years have been very difficult for a lot of different reasons. Um, if you ask me how I'm doing on any given day, I've over about a decade now, my answer is to you is I'm thankful. If you say, Matt, how are you doing? Um, I say I'm thankful because I'm not always fine. Not everything's easy, but there's always something to be thankful for. And the reason we do this exercise and we've been doing it now for over 10 years is this. Uh, you worship your way out of stinking thinking. You know, and if we if we come with, you know, if we're struggling in our thoughts to get thankful is a really helpful thing because it's a form of worship. So we ask this after we do the tokens of appreciation for time that God's given us in victory. We also then say, so what are you thankful for? And people share and then we share this. Hey, if you're if you're struggling in your thoughts, grab a piece of paper and start writing out what you're thankful for. Try to get to 70 things. It's a form of worship. And, and in that, you're thankful to someone and something, and, and it's really hard to stay in stinking thinking when you, when you start listing off what you're thankful for. And so we do that every week. And then as, we're, as we wrap up, you know, we get into the card. We start looking at the lesson. And so let's do that together. Um, so we're, our lesson tonight, and, and by the way, earlier in the messaging for you all, um, Bethany put on there, you can go and click on it, and it'll show you the lesson cards. And I think you can download those too. Um, Jesus said, this attitude of victorious living, obedience, Jesus said, blessed to the pure in heart, for they will see God. I desire to live under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit day by day. When Glenn and Judy developed these attitudes of victorious living, they were looking at obedience and they, they recognized something. It does take the Lord uh, flowing through us to produce um, this. The Spirit of God flowing through us produces guidance so that we might obey God. And so we're asking for that. Uh, every day. Now we're going to look at Psalm 51. I'm going to have Caleb read it to you if you're good with that. Sure. And we're going to look at Psalm 51. When we look at Psalm 51, know this. King David, a man after God's own heart, had sinned in such a way by taking his friend's wife 
and then getting her pregnant and then eventually having that friend killed this man this mighty man that had helped david come into his kingdom um david had drifted into in his addictions because he had them uh not following god closely and, and it just messed a lot up and when he got confronted about it um he then wrote this psalm as he repented before god and many of the attitudes that we do each week you can see in this psalm you know from honesty to humility to repentance they all show up but we're going to look at we're going to look at obedience tonight in psalm 51. so we read that for the folks and then we'll talk so Psalm 51, 1 through 19. God, be merciful to me because of your faithful love. Because of your great compassion, erase all the wrongs I have done. Scrub away my guilt. Wash me clean from my sin. I know I have done wrong. I remember that sin all the time. I did what you said is wrong. You are the one I have sinned against. I say this so people will know that I am wrong and you are right. What you decide is fair. I was born to do wrong, a sinner before I left my mother's womb. You want me to be completely loyal, so put true wisdom deep inside me. Remove my sin and make me pure. Wash me until I am whiter than snow. Let me hear the sounds of joy and happiness again. Let the bones you crushed be happy again. Don't look at my sins, erase them all. God, create a pure heart in me and make my spirit strong again don't push me away or take your holy spirit from me your help made me so happy give me joy again make my spirit strong and ready to obey you i will teach the guilty how you want them to live and the sinners will come back to you god spare me from the punishment of death my god you are the one who saves me let me sing about all the good things you do for me my lord I will open my mouth and sing your praises. You don't really want sacrifices or I would give them to you. The sacrifice God wants is a humble spirit. God, you will not turn away someone who comes with a humble heart and is willing to obey you. God, please be good to Zion. Rebuild your walls of Jerusalem. Then you can, then you can enjoy the kind of sacrifices you want. You will receive whole burnt offerings and people will again offer bulls on your altar. Now, as we're doing a group that's about victory, a life of victory, coming out of that old life of addiction, and some of us are watching this, we're actually in our addiction and we need help. We're struggling. Um, and we get into a passage like this and David gets it. Um, and so when we're working through this, he, he was hurting over the, the stuff that he had done that had messed up his life, right? And so in, in that, what we're going to do is kind of work our way through this passage. But what we'll do over there with, in person with the folks is I'll ask the question, well, what do you see in this passage? You know, how does this passage impact you? You know, uh, John, glad you're with us. Good to see you. Um, as, as we're working through this passage, and Caleb, you just read it to them all, what's a couple things from this passage that impacted you? I mean, we, were, we had a staff time earlier at 6. 6 to 7, I meet with the staff here. We all work through it together. And now we just read it again with you. But what's something that impacted you from this with regards to obedience? Yeah, I mean, verse 5, it just says, I was born to do wrong, a sinner before I left my mother's womb. Uh, we believe that we're all born with a sin nature. And um, for me personally, that was definitely evident in my life from an early age. And uh, so... God wants us to turn away from that lifestyle and repent and obey him. And so at the end, it says uh, in 17, the sacrifice that God wants is a humble spirit. You will not turn away someone who comes with a humble heart. So that is just going hand in hand with um, having an attitude of, the, of obedience towards those in authority and towards God. Yeah, and, and in that, you know, when, when he quotes verse 17 if you guys have your own bibles and look that up and i'll always encourage you to you know if you come we'll give you bibles we got them free here but if you if you have them you know also grab your bible and look what we're looking at in psalm 51 but when he just quoted that the sacrifices that god wants is a humble spirit god you will not turn away someone who comes to you with a humble heart and is willing to obey you part of what we've got to come to grips with in our old life is lord man, I totally have jacked my life up. I need your help. And if you don't come, if, if you don't help me, I can't get myself out of this. And many of us come into the most excellent way. We're, we're looking for 
that. We're looking for victory. We're looking for to get out of the old life and we don't know how to get there without you know somebody helping us. So this is why Christ is there for us. One of the things I would really love for you all to check out as you go back to your own passage or pull up the card is in verse two, he says, scrub away my guilt. You know, he's already said, God, be merciful to me in your faithful love. Show your compassion. Erase the wrongs I've done. Then he says, scrub away my guilt. Wash me clean from sin. Here's the thing. When Christ died on the cross for you and whoever's watching right now live, or if you're going to watch this later, he, he hung on the cross for you. And he bore the wrath that all of us deserve, but he bore the wrath that you deserve based off of sin. And what he, what he did there hanging on that cross is he said something very profound. He said, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. And then he cried out something for you. He said, it is finished. He bore all of your sins, past, present, future on himself. And, and in taking all of your sins on himself for you right now, he, to, to know this, please know this, that scrubs away your guilt that washes you clean have you placed your faith in that transaction that took place in 33 a.d on that cross for you he loves you he still does then if you've placed your faith in christ and all of those sins have been washed clean he gives you his holy spirit because he's cleaned you and he puts his spirit in you and the father the most important being in all of the universe that sees you now clean is the father in heaven and he sees you, daughter, princess of heaven that's here, or, or prince of heaven that's here, and you're in the family. You're clean. There's not, you, you, you are never going to go to hell. You, you're never going to be separated from Father forever. You are going to be with God forever because of the transaction that Jesus did. David believed in the one that was going to come to take away the sins of the world. If you go back and read his writings in the Psalms, particularly look at Psalm 22, he literally talks about Jesus coming. They've pierced my hands and my feet. They've cast lots for my clothing. They wag their heads at me. All of my bones are out of joint. He's describing the crucifixion in Psalm 22, a thousand years before it happens. And he's literally placed his faith in that there's one that's going to come and take away my sins. When he's appealing to God in Psalm 51, he's doing the same thing we are all doing. David struggled in his flesh. He did many things if you read about his life. In first and second, you know, Sam, Sam, uh, as you go back and read Samuel, first and second Samuel, and first and second Kings, and you read about his life, you'll your chronicles, you'll look at his life and you'll see he did a lot of wrong things, but God loved him. He he had been clean because of what he believed about God. What do you believe about God? Do you believe Christ died for all of your sins, was buried and rose again? Then He places His Spirit in you, and now you can obey. Now catch this in the text too that I just love. Um, he then starts asking, he says, so put true wisdom inside of me. Remove my sin, make me pure. Catch that, he's saying, you do it, God, you do it. You put true wisdom in me. You remove it, you, you make me pure. Create in me a clean heart, he says, a pure heart. He's asking God to do it. He's asking, give me joy again. He's asking God to do it. Make my spirit strong again and, I, and I'll be ready to obey you. So as you're working through this, one of the things that we're going to teach at the most excellent way continuously is as you've placed your faith in Christ, then never stop asking for him to help you. He, he, he literally, we're going to move on in this text, but he's looking at you and saying continuously, you now have complete access to me, princess of heaven. You now have complete access to me, prince of heaven. Will you just keep asking? Look what David's doing. You do it, God. You do it, God. You do it, God. I need you to do it. Many times we, we, in our, if we really want to be obedient, we need the spirit of God to be obedient through us. And we need to keep asking you do it. God, give me wisdom. So I want, you know, you want loyalty. So you do it through me. David understood that. And he wants us to understand that. Any other thoughts after I share all that, that you want to share with those folks and looking at this side, because you're about to give your testimony a little bit. So they know why, why this is so profound for you, but what are you thinking? Yeah, I think like in the midst of um, addiction, obedience just um, and submissiveness just sound like something that's hard or difficult or going to take all the fun out of um, out of our lifestyles. But the reality is, it's very freeing to just give our wills and our lives over to God and just let Him take care of it for us because His plan is infinitely better than anything I ever came up with. So good. And so we then flip over the card. And again, you guys should have that card in the message feed. And there's a quote from Ken Myers. You want to read it? Yeah. 
So obedience is submitting to the lover of our souls, Ken Myers. As we submit in love, we become obedient. And here's why we can know that is, you know, um, there's another paragraph. You want to read that for them? Yeah. Your love for God is evidenced by your obedience to him. Your peace and joy are the byproducts of your obedience to God's word. As you consider this attitude of victorious living, may you reflect on the blessings that God promised, promises to those who obey him, knowing that it is because he loves you. If you disobey your creator, how will that blessing come about? So one of the things we, we talk about all the time is, look, without obedience before God and the spirit of God, he produces it through us. There's no blessing, so we don't want to resist. We're continually asking God, as I abide in you, flow through me to produce fruit that there's no law against. Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23 says that, that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and the, the final piece of that fruit is self-control. It's the package deal. It's like an orange. It's all these slivers put together. And love to self-control is the Spirit's work through you to produce fruit. He does it. Against such things, it says, right after that, there is no law. He, as we're yielded to him, because remember Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I've got to have the sap flowing through the branch as I abide in Jesus. The sap being the spirit of God produces the fruit. I, I've got to yield moment by moment, day by day, as got, that got said earlier by one of our ladies we've got to we've got to understand we make this more complicated than it really is because we somehow in in our humanness think we've got to work our way to pleasing god or we got to work our way to stay pleasing to god and he's saying you surrender your way and let me flow through you you know who's really good at obeying the father the spirit of god's really good at obeying the father as we stay surrendered and he's flowing through us and we ask he produces and so C.S. Lewis says this on our card, this quote, obedience is the road to freedom. It's so true. He, he through us. Now catch this because the next paragraph says this. Jesus says it very simply in John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. But look at what it says next in verse 16. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you for how long? Forever, it says. I will ask the Father... And he will give you another helper to be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth. The people of the world cannot accept him because they don't see him or know him. But you, believer, you know him. He lives with you and he will be in you. He makes that promise to his disciples on the night he was betrayed. Judas has left the room and Jesus is speaking up to his disciples. He's saying, look, I'm going to give you a helper. He's going to be in you and flow through you. Know this, he says. He, the Spirit of God, will guide you to actions that lead to victorious living. You know, as you surrender to the Spirit in your life, you will be obedient because of your love for your Savior. Because the Spirit of God's love is flowing through you, guess what happens? There is no law against it, ever. If he's flowing through you, now, so the key is that we stay close and we don't grieve him or quench him. Because once you get saved, uh, brother or sister in Christ, know this, when you placed your faith in Christ, he gives you his spirit as a seal and guarantee of your inheritance, Ephesians chapter 1 says. He places him in you. Now, you know, then you go on to Ephesians chapter 3 and it says you could grieve him with your sin. Well, then you got to confess. Or you could quench him, you throw water on the fire with your sin. Well, then you got to confess. But let him be back to producing fruit. And it's so good because when he's producing the fruit, there's no law against it. Now, this is about the point where we're going to have him... Uh, Caleb shares testimony because the next quote, I'd like you to share R.C. Sproul's quote and then share your testimony because I think you you believed this lie for a while. So listen to what R.C. Sproul says, folks, and then uh, Caleb's going to share a little bit about where he come from. Yeah, so the fundamental deception of Satan is the lie that obedience can never bring happiness. R.C. Sproul. So, um, yeah, just um, I grew up going to this church uh, my parents started coming here when I was probably like two years old, so 1988. And um, I just always kind of uh, got into trouble pretty early, um, all kinds of different things uh, as a young kid, um, from shoplifting to just 
just anything I could do to get in trouble, I like to do the wrong thing. And I knew it was wrong. I got saved at a very early age. Um, never really felt like I was living for the Lord. Um, that just manifested in different ways as I got older. But by middle school and high school, um, that was using drugs and alcohol on a daily basis, um, hanging out with a lot of the wrong people, uh, just living a life for myself with no regard for anyone else. Um, yeah, I, I, I ended up getting into dealing drugs, and um, which led me to prison. Um, I decided at one point I just wanted to try every drug there was, decided my favorite one was heroin. Uh, that led me down a really dark path. And, uh, and God reached into, that, reached into that mess, and he saved me um, just at the perfect time. So I, I had known God was there my whole, my whole life. Um, I had different ebbs and flows where I was really close to him or, or not, but I wouldn't say for any amount of consistent time I've really lived my life for him. And so I knew that I could pray to God and that he would help me, and I believed that he was real. And so I had a Bible in prison, and I read it occasionally. And um, it wasn't until after I got out and really hit a new uh, rock bottom with my drug use and everything in my life was turned upside down. Um, you know, life was just as bad as it could get. I'm sure lots of you can imagine or have your own different bottoms, but I mean, I, I literally had nothing left. And so, um, I went into a inpatient rehab facility, um, got out, lived in an Oxford house. And that whole time God was working on my heart and changing me from the inside out. And lots of that had to do with the fact that I wanted to obey him. Whereas before I was just living for myself, being incredibly selfish, and uh, I didn't, I thought I knew what was best for me, and that the life I was living was gonna be fun. Um, it wasn't, and God had a far greater plan. And once I turned my will, my life over to Him, and just um, submitted to to His will, that's when all this, um, everything started changing for the better. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome to be able to be with you and have him share this here um, with you all over, you know, Facebook Live. And then eventually, if you're watching this later, too, because here's the thing, as a as a member of this church, as I've grown into leadership, I, I had to go downtown to where he was working because he was an active heroin dealer in this town and he was hurting people. Um, and he had grown up at this church, but he was actually harming people. And I had to go downtown with a letter from the church uh, asking him to repent. Um, that, that ultimately he was under church discipline because he was harming people. And as we are working through that, and here we are now all these years later, I love to see what God has done in his life because there was people that did not believe uh, Caleb could ever come out of that spiral that he was in and the darkness, especially when he went off to the penitentiary for um, the, all the crimes. Um, the, he and I made connection after he got out of the penitentiary, started meeting. Uh, most excellent way has been a part of his life. And we have watched what the word of God has done in his heart and mind and has transformed him. That's all the Lord. And for him to even say now today, man, I, I really want to obey God. But folks, being that I lived it out with him, know this, that's a miracle. Like that's, that's God doing something in somebody's heart that nobody believed that could happen. Um, fortunately, I, I've always believed that people can come out of this because I know the darkness I was trapped in. And so that's why I love doing the most excellent way with you all. Um, I just, it's, it's awesome to be able to watch God do these things. It's addicting to be a part of this with you all. And so even as we see Josh and Carly, uh, thank you guys. Good, good that you're with us and John and Jerry and all the rest, Vince and others that were there, the ladies that were there with us, just know this, a lot of people praying for you and what we're watching happen is God doing miracles in people that people had given up on and a lot of people that had given up on themselves. Mm. And so um, the next thing on our card says this, when we come to our senses, okay, and that's what happened for Caleb and for us here. Mm -hmm. When we come to our senses over the fact that we have not been obedient to our creator, he says we can come directly to him with confidence that he will forgive and give strength, peace, joy, and a life filled with victory over self-centered behavior as a direct result of knowing Christ as our Lord and Savior. Know that he understands you and wants you to come to him with everything. Jesus will give you the power to overcome through his mercy and his grace. What I've watched happen consistently is that 
people start coming to their senses over that. Okay, so you're telling me like what David said, I can go straight to God and start asking. And remember, David said back in Psalm 51, the sacrifices that God wants is a humble spirit. God will not turn away someone who comes to him with a humble heart and is willing to obey him. And so it, he's saying even put pure wisdom down inside me, God. He's asking for that. We can ask for that. Hebrews chapter 4, 12 through 16 then is a great passage that just tells you this promise. Um, I have Caleb read it uh, to you because it's such a picture of what God did in my life, what he's doing in Caleb's life and what he does for y'all. So please listen to this passage and understand. We'll, we'll have another little discussion about this passage in obedience, but man, it's so good. Uh, to know that he'll flow through us to produce fruit. And he already knows all of our stuff. So will you share that with him? Yeah. So this is Hebrews 4, 12 through 16. For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are open and laid bare to the eye of him to whom we have to do. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For do we, we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Isn't that good? That's such a great passage. And as you're reading that along with us or you go back and read that passage later, isn't the easiest person to make right with is the one that knows everything that you've done and every wrong that you've done and still wants you to come to them and confess it and get right? Wouldn't that be the easiest person to make right with? Because if, if the eyes of him with, look, he's seen it all. There's nothing hidden from him that just got said. And yet he sympathizes with your weaknesses, was tempted in every way as you are so that you can come to him to receive grace and mercy in your time of need. As you place your faith in Christ that he took care of all of your sins. You, that, By the way, I'm going to share this and it's absolutely true. There is a heaven and there is a hell. Why? I believe the scriptures because it makes it clear that there is separation from God the Father forever in eternity separated from God the Father because of our sins. Jesus came so that we would never face that. As you place your faith in him, he removes it, gives you his spirit, and now you have complete access to him 24-7 every moment of the day. You never have to hang up the phone. You can talk to him about everything. He knows it all. The word of God is sharper than a double-edged, and you can translate that when it says double-edged sword. You can translate it scalpel. The word of God is translated there. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. It's able to pierce through bone and marrow. It's able to open up your heart, and God says, I see what's in there, and I still love you. Will you come to me and confess your sins, and I'm faithful and just to remove it and all the unrighteousness that led up to it? First John Chapter 1, verse 9, then goes on to say in chapter 2, My little children, I'm writing these things to you that you may not sin. But if you do, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is your propitiation. And that term means full payment. Jesus Christ the righteous, who is your full payment for your sins and not for yours only, but also for the whole world's. That 1 John 1, 9 through 2, 3 works so perfectly with Hebrews chapter 4, 12 through 16 that for you to be able to know that you can come straight to the throne of grace and all of that's going to lead to obedience because all of that leads to a spirit led life and the spirit of God's awesome at obeying the father through you. So as you're working through these things, what have you played? What have you done with Christ? You know, that's, that's the biggest question that there is. And, and so every week we're taking people to that truth that by the way, the fundamental deception of Satan is the lie that obedience will never bring happiness. If you want true joy, having a spirit-led life is absolute true joy because he produces love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And so we pray that you're encouraged by all of that. Um, Caleb, as you read Hebrews chapter 4, 12 through 16, what's something that impacted you from that passage? 
Yeah, I mean, God already knows every intimate detail of our lives and our hearts, our thoughts and intentions. So um, it's just, I think that's, um, when I was using, I thought that was scary. Um, now that I'm not, I find that very comforting. And no matter what your situation is right now, you can find comfort in that as well because um, despite knowing all the most intimate secrets of your life, God knows you and loves you and wants you. Amen. One of the things you don't know is that Caleb's wife is over helping ladies right now in person across the parking lot at the church in most excellent way. Um, Caleb, I got to do, had the privilege of doing Caleb and, and his wife's uh, premarital counseling. I got to do their wedding. I've gotten to watch them now raising four little boys and the excitement now of seeing this new life, everybody. I mean, for you all know that we're praying for you. If you leave something on there for us to pray or, or shoot us a private message, we will pray for you. A lot of people, including myself, were praying for this young man when he was doing heroin and dealing in, in, in gangs and doing all the dumb stuff that he was involved in because we all were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. Like we said in Titus, he was that. I, I was that. All of us can relate. God does miracles. People are praying and we're praying for you. So we pray that you're encouraged by that because God answers those prayers. Thank you for being with us. Um, again, uh, if you know somebody that needs uh, victory over addiction and you, you know about this going on, on on Monday nights at 7, please point them this direction. We pray that if you ever need anything, that you'll get a hold of us so that we can pray for you. We'd love to see you in person also. We know we have people watching from all over the nation too, so we're praying for all of you. Let us know how we can pray. If you also, you, you would rather shoot us an email about how to pray for you, you can do it at tmew at salemheightschurch.org. Uh, that's tmew at salemheightschurch.org, and we will be praying for you. So thank you for doing this with me. Yeah. It's awesome. It's and we're going to have different people on here every week, so you can see all these different folks that have come out of addiction and God's given victory. Uh, we're thankful for you. Uh, may the Lord bless you all, and may, uh, may you enjoy our Savior. And again, if there's anything you need prayer for, let us know. Good night, Jerry. Thank you. And we will be praying for your family. Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt. Jenna, thank you that you're here. John and others, thankful that you're here. May the Lord bless you. Good night.